have industry leaders discuss the main differentiators between owned and managed assets. We have Mr. Vineet Verma, Director, Brigade Hospitality Brigade Group, as the moderator. Mr. Verma has more than three decades of rich experience in the hospitality and retail sector. Under his leadership, Brigade Hospitality is ranked among the top mid-sized great places to work in India. Mr. Verma has also recently been elected to the Board of Directors of World Trade Travel Center Association. Joining Mr. Verma on stage are Mr. Dilip Rajakarya, Group CEO, Minor International, Mr. Patu K. Swani, Chairman and MD, Lemon Tree Hotels, and Ms. Priya Paul, Chairperson, APJ Surandar Park Hotels. Where do you want? Where would you like to? You should be at the end. Yeah, maybe. No, how are you? Either way. Okay. <laughs> I'll sit wherever you like here. I don't want to be too far away from Dilip, so. Why don't you come can, here? Yeah, maybe I'll sit somewhere in the middle. Uh -huh. okay. No, uh, Patu, you can. Or either way, actually. How does it matter? The lady is all alone. Is that okay? No, it's okay. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to Bangalore, by the way, for those of you from outside Bangalore. So we've been uh, given a rather academic kind of a topic today to discuss. It's more like a master class. But we are still going to sort of try and make a little bit light of this uh, subject. At the same time, also ensure that at the end of the session, uh, all of you have some takeaway and learning from what, how to differentiate between owned and managed hotels. In fact, this has been a hot topic. Even as an owner rep myself, uh, we own eight, 10 properties by now. We have also often wondered that why is it that the major brands across the world are going asset light? Uh, whoever I speak with speaks about going asset light. From owning hundreds of hotels, historically, they're down to maybe zero or one or very few. So we have three stalwarts here amongst us, Patu, Priya, and Dilip. Just to give you some data about them, <coughs> Patu, his company owns 103 hotels, and of which he owns 41 and manages 62. Priya owns 30 hotels as of now. <coughs> of which she owns 10 and manages 20. And Dilip of the minor group, he owns a total of 532 hotels, and of which he owns or leases 365 and manages 160 with a rare yet uh, seven. So I'm sure we'll all wonder that why is it, what are the advantages and disadvantages of owning or managing a hotel? Uh, is, it, is it they don't want to own a hotel because they want to focus on their area of expertise, which is asset management? Or is it that they honestly believe that owning a hotel is not a good idea and they leave it to developers? So we need to figure all that out in this session today. <clears throat> so with this, I'll uh, pose my first question to Patu. Maybe if you can just explain to us what, are the, what is the structure, structural difference, a management structural dis difference between a managed and an owned hotel? What are the key features? How do you differentiate? <coughs> well, I think before I answer that, let's go back for a moment. There are four parts of the hotel business. Who develops hotels? Who owns hotels? Who manages hotels? And who franchises or brands, brand hotels? So think of the return profile, since we have done all four as a Nike, a swoosh. So if you are willing to take the risk of development, I have found that for every, assuming one is to one debt equity, your typical equity return in three years is 4x to 6x, depending on the EBITDA you generate. But it's a one-off. Now that can then move into, by the same person or be sold to somebody who wants to own asset. Asset ownership is a, completely different business to the first and the second and third. 
which is, it's a yield business. The only problem is because the yield is not stable like a commercial asset, which you are also into as a group, uh, the return, I would say, should be risk adjusted for volatility. So if a commercial asset gives 14% cash yield, then a hotel asset on a cycle return should be 18%. Okay. Okay, I'm adding a 20% risk premium. But from a ownership perspective, the yield you look at is linked to interest rates. So I would say if you look at Chalet or you look at Sami, as two now existing examples, the multiples are in the mid to early, mid teens to late teens. So really you're saying you are buying a hotel for a six to 7% return currently. Of course, when interest rates go down, both these companies, market value will go up because the cap rate will come down. Then you have an implied return, which is appreciation of assets. So I think something as, a, as an industry we have not explained to the capital markets is, hotels, unlike nearly other, any other non-real estate asset class, is an appreciating asset. And therefore, an implied return is your replacement cost increase. And therefore, you get a cash return of 6-7% and a 6-7% return when you sell the asset for inflation. Management return, I have calculated, comes to 25 to 45% of capital deployed, but capital is limited. Brand return, 100 to 400%. So that's why if you keep reading brands, you know, like uh, Tata's are valued at 100 billion, Reliance at 100 billion, it's the implied value of the brand. From an Indian perspective, the big problem is that owners and managers of hotels, when they are two separate people, there is dynamic tension because I think we do not explain expectations clearly on both sides. And that is the fundamental flaw today. We don't talk asset turnover, we don't talk return on capital, we talk EBITDA, which is bullshit. I can give you a 50% <coughs> EBITDA and a 3% return, but a 30% EBITDA and a 12% return. So these are the, the way I look at this business. I'm sure my esteemed colleagues will have much more to add. No, well said, Patu. In fact, as I say that, uh, I tell our general managers that uh, their duty stops at the GOP. And the major drama actually happens below GOP. Correct. And so, so this is where we need to be a little more mindful of. So Dilip, uh, you have the largest number of, and you, I think you own these hotels globally, if I'm not mistaken. So I think uh, let's uh, derive from your experience as according to you, what are the main advantages of owning a hotel vis-a-vis -vis managing one and vice versa? So if you can cite a few advantages and disadvantages that why should you own a hotel and why should you just manage a hotel? Sure, uh, good morning all and thank you for having me today. Um, I think from our perspective, uh, you know, we started as a, what they call it in today's term as a asset heavy company. Uh, so we used to own <coughs> most of our hotels, including some of our third party assets, like say, for example, in Thailand, we own three, four seasons, we own the JW Marriott in Phuket, and we also own the St. Regis as a third party brand. And from that, we navigated more uh, when we launched our own brands, like, you know, the Anantara was launched in uh, year 2000. Uh, and since then, we focused on our brands in terms of uh, expansion and we've actually invested in our brands as well so I think for us the way we see it is it's more of a mindset uh, you know as long as I think where most of the management companies they fail is that the the vision or the alignment is not there with the owners uh, so but if you have a ownership mindset uh, when you're managing hotels you actually feel the pain of the owner, uh, especially when you go through things like COVID and some of the other pandemic uh, issues we've had uh, in, in Thailand as well. So I think, you know, today we own almost two thirds of our assets, whether it's owned or leased. And uh, <coughs> the advantages we get is the equity return. Uh, because for us, like as you were saying, Patu, like, you know, our in return on investment criteria is quite high. You know, we expect at least 12, 13 percent uh, or above based on the country risk in terms of owner returns. And, and that's where we would invest. So if we don't meet those invest investment criteria, we, we don't invest. 
so, so we are quite, uh, I wouldn't say we are asset light, but I, I would say we, we've gone into a strategy which is asset right. Uh, so you need to have the right balance of assets in, 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 in the countries you operate. So the advantages is, you know, owner versus managed. As I said, uh, the equity returns are very strong. Uh, the asset appreciation is also pretty good. As long as you, you, uh, you firewall your asset in terms of some of the headwinds, whether it's interest rate hikes or whether it's inflation, you know, we're quite used to it. Like, you know, we operate in Argentina where the inflation is 100 plus percent. Uh, it's hyperinflation, and we know how to to, to, to operate in, in countries which are, which, are, which are quite tough. And we do own our assets there. Uh, from a management perspective, I think the advantages are, of course, it's risk-free, as everyone says. And you're just clipping management fees. But it's not easy. You know, when you're clipping management fees, you also need to, your brand needs to be strong, your distribution needs to be strong. And you need to really invest time with the owners to make sure that they are also getting the required return on investment. And it's not just up to GOP, but it's right to the bottom uh, of, of, of your PL. You know, some of the owners complain. Like, you know, we have a lot of owners who have moved from the larger brands to us uh, because they say, look, uh, you know, our, our management companies, they just look at GOP. They don't look at owner profits. And when I look at owner profits, sometimes the management fee the owner, uh, the management company gets it's higher than the owner return. And the owner is investing millions of dollars in the asset, but he gets no benefit. So there is a misalignment, uh, and, and we understand that. And for us, it's easy because we have an owner mindset, and we operate as a management company. So, and wherever we take management hotels, we actually put the resources and the people and the development team to make sure that we can support the owners as well. And we're quite, we're very close to the the owners. Of course, on the other side, on the flip side, you know, uh, we have the third party managed assets. They don't like us. Why? Because we push them, right? We push them because we benchmark them with our, with our performance and we say, if we are able to do this, you guys should be able to do this as well. So it's very difficult for, for some of the management companies to wiggle out. And to be honest, they don't like us, you know, like the, the big, the big hotel chains, but they understand from uh, they understand the pain of of being an owner, and uh, and also the the benefits of being a management company. It's not just clipping fees; it's also making sure your brand is strong, the brand standards are good, and the owner of the management, uh, if you're doing a management, that the owner is ad adhering to your brand standards because the only asset you have is the brand on on the on the on the, the, the hotel and the people because otherwise you own nothing. Uh, and that's the, the benefit of having management, uh, uh, an asset light platform versus an asset heavy platform. So, you know, it's, it's again, it's an alignment, it's the mindset, and it's also the time you invest with some of the owners uh, and understanding the owners, their pain, and their return criteria to ensure that, you know, the owners are making money. If the owners are not successful, you know, you're dead. So I think that's, uh, that's what I would say. Good message. Uh, I think I like what you said, as you need to be asset right instead of asset light. And that's a good takeaway. And uh, uh, part of going back, I know you have partly answered that question. But just to add further to that, uh, what are the financial considerations or investment risks that you think vary between owning a hotel and managing one? See, owning a hotel basically I think it's going to be a very different ball game from 2025 onwards. Because India is at that cusp when the number of consumers of hotels is going to grow 4 5 x, like happened in other economies at a similar po point in their GDP. Indonesia, uh, you know, go back to, well, China is obviously an example, but all the economies that crossed 23 to $2,800 per capita there were a whole bunch of guys who crossed the magic number of $7,000 per capita. That's the magic number throughout Asia. And if enough people move into that, they all consume hotel rooms. And at uh, $22,000 per capita, they consume luxury. So what? if you just look at 
every single economic paper in India, we are at that point where within the next four years, there will be an explosion in growth of hotel room demand. Okay, and I, that is linked to the, my answer to you. Second is, I think the clearest example is, every, if you look at 700 aircraft in India, the orders on books in the next five years is a 4x growth. Yeah, that's true. Now, they are not fools. They're investing tens of billions of dollars. That's the kind of growth you're going to see. And airline demand growth is a direct proxy for branded hotel room growth. So I think going forward, ownership investment is going to get more and more attractive because there are not going to be enough assets. And then, of course, over time, they may, uh, you know, then it'll stabilize. Fundamentally, the return for an asset owner in India for hotels still today has been very choppy. And I think for managers, as Dilip said, and I have no doubt Priya will also say, for managers, there's no risk. But I always say, at least because we own 6,000 rooms, I always say, listen, and our company has been trained to think of ownership because initially we owned the hotels we ran. And I'm sure it's the same case with both of them. So we are not, we are absolutely asset right. We are very clear that future will be managing and branding. Returns are much less. You need to brand or manage six to eight hotels to get the return of one hotel. But of course, it's risk-free. But are there enough hotels? I keep reading. Somebody says, I'm growing, you know, I'll grow 100%. Are there are only 55,000 luxury hotels in India and another 10,000 unbranded. There are only 35,000 mid-scale hotels in India, uh, upper-scale hotels in India, and another 15,000 unbranded. So where are these hotels you're going to grow with? Okay, it's all reported in media, uh, and we are equally guilty that we'll grow this, this. So really, 90% of the hotel rooms in India are sub-40 rooms, hotels. Okay. So those will be the franchise route and the distribution. That's the future in India. And new assets coming in to meet demand in Tier 2 and Tier 3. As far as you talk about return, I talk about risk. In the past, the risk was all taken by the owners, and in my opinion, the management companies walloped them. They were very unfair to them. And I still say there is a case for international or domestic brands to say, I want to be aligned with you. Here's the deal. I will take this much of what you make, okay, in a ladder, so that I take some of that risk. And if I go below this return, it's a hurdle rate, it's like a private equity fund. I won't take anything. Why shouldn't I get punished? Okay, but it's not happened yet. So as an operator, you, you have to have a skin in the game. I think that works best skin for Skin is my ways. fees. Yeah, Today, absolutely. it's totally, uh, most of the, the fees are loaded in such a way that it doesn't depend on your hotel's performance. So would you suggest that linking the management fee to the profitability only and nothing else? 100%. I would be happy to do it, but I need that kind of an owner who thinks, not an individual, I need a, a platform to say, okay, give me a 12% return on capital, then we'll talk about your returns, and then ladder me. Great, great. Priya, first of all, congratulations for the successful listing. Thank you. And that was a brilliant show. Thank you. And uh, I don't know whether you have an idea or not, you have inspired many more of us to follow you. Happy to. I'm so, glad. I think the industry so maybe sometimes, time maybe sometimes in future. So uh, you also are, I would say, relatively asset light because you own eight, ten hotels and uh, have managed twenty. Own and lease, yeah. Own and lease, correct. So I have a question. Do you uh, have you had a case where you have sold one of your properties and concurrently leased it back to manage, or taken it back on a management contract, or have you transitioned? from a managed hotel to buying it over. So what are the advantages, disadvantages, if you were to do something like that, moving between owning and managing? So we actually started as a ownership company in 1967, and um, as you said, we have actually right now just uh, seven properties that we own, three that are leased, and the balance 21 or so, um, that are management contracts. So I think we, dis we decided um, more than uh, a decade ago that for us to grow, and to leverage our brand strengths and our understanding of customers, we had to be in the tier two and tier three cities, and that's what we started building out in the uh, 2010 onwards. And uh, really creating a brand that was fit to the aspirational needs of this new 
uh, class of travelers that you know Patu was talking about as their per capita income increase. That's where the demand is. And um, also looking at how food and beverages, which is very central to our brand, plays out in these <coughs> smaller cities. So uh, that's what we looked at, and we decided that, okay, you know, obviously because of the capital considerations, this was like we were uh, still in that um, little financial um, depression that we had at that time. So we said the faster way that we can grow and get our brand across is to do the asset light. And I think it was, um, you know, from being an owner driven, you know, all decisions are yours, well, mine mostly, but <laughs> and with a great team, it was, uh, it, you know, you have a particular vision which you follow and you do that. So then we here we had a new brand with a new vision, it's called Zone by the Park, and that was working only with uh, developers, owners across the country. So I think, I, I think what I see, you know, sitting now in 2024, is that uh, we have to, as an industry, also educate owners. And I think that's what's maybe missing, and you know, Manav talked about the owners asking for an association, um, question mark. But it, it's also a question of, um, not just the operator's responsibility, but also owners being a good owner. If you're giving your asset to somebody, what are your responsibilities? What is the, uh, what is the relationship? And that knowledge, um, you know, because many of our owners, especially in the smaller cities, are new owners. They are new to the industry, and sometimes you just see the, you know, that fine, I'm doing, going to do the best hotel in my town, but what does that take to keep it the best hotel in the next 10, 15 years? I think that's what we're going to start having to do, all of us in the industry. So I think that is one of the things. I also see that the difference between, obviously in a managed um, uh, hotel and in your own owned hotels, you are responsible for the PNL. you can make the financial decisions. Here you have another layer and you have to go through that. And sometimes a little hand-holding about you know, building a new facility or which you think and you can see is relevant for that market. So I think th there are differences. Um, but I think, uh, I think for us, having a mix of these owned, leased, and managed hotels is where, you know, an asset right, as Dilip said, um, gives us a good return, leverages our brand, and um, with, you know, intangible and uh, intangible brands. So that's what excites us, and that's how we position ourselves in the next few years. That's nice, Priya. Thanks. Patu, since you've been managing both categories of hotels, <clears throat> the next question is for you that what do you think are the operational and decision-making differences between a managed hotel and an owned hotel, a hotel that you own and a hotel that you manage? To what extent do you go into your decision-making, setting the operational structures, operational procedures? I think there's total chaos here. The owners, obviously, if you are not performing to the, see, the first thing is expectation alignment. Yes. So if I say, you know, I'll give you a 50% EBITDA. But what he sees is that's a 6% return on capital. There is this mismatch. So I think the first thing all of us should do as managers is align ourselves on the <coughs> return expectations. And the second equally important thing is the fees you should keep aside, the, uh, the funds you should keep aside for renovation. Because the, the real tension is what I, as a manager, want my brand to stand for, and what he, mm. as the owner of your asset, wants his PNL to be like, which is where the maximum interaction happens. Now, I just met an owner today. It's a new hotel, very nice hotel. He wants a return. I mean, he wants a, if I looked at STR, he wants a 1.4 on STR performance. And we are at 0.6 because it's just opened. So, you know, then the expectation is really what he's saying is he wants a 2.3% growth in revenue, which is not going to happen. So, actually, I met him out of curiosity, by the way, because I don't deal with him. But I just wanted to understand, you know, what does he want? But he's looking at it from a return. And somebody in our business development promised him the moon. And right now, we are talking about an asteroid. So, the real issue is mm -hmm. there is today a complete, I mean, I have hardly met an owner. Okay, other than in the very big cities where anyway, a gadha and a goda run together, who's really happy with the performance. Okay, and the amount of interference is, is just ridiculous. So sometimes I think that the way to make sense out of this is to have actually, you know, Priya said something so interesting in tier two, tier three, these guys don't know the business. 
एंड समटाइम्स आर बिजनेस डेवलपमेंट टीम्स मिसलीड ये होगा वो होगा एक्चुअली वी नीड प्लेटफॉर्म सो आई एम कमिंग ऑफ द व्यू दैट ओवर टाइम लाइक अ शैले और अ सैमी एंड वी आर आर सेल्स गोइंग टू नाउ लिस्ट आर प्लेटफॉर्म इन द नेक्स्ट ट्वेल्व फोर्टीन मंथ्स इज बेसिकली क्रिएट प्लेटफॉर्म्स विच ओन टेंस ऑफ थाउजें ऑफ रोड्स एंड दैट इज द वे टू टू एक्चुअली गेट सम अलाइनमेंट और वन आई वॉज लिसनिंग टू देम I ask myself, why are they not like the, we have here? We have hotel event. We should have ten companies like them saying, "We'll act as your, uh, as uh, your asset managers, right? Get a hundred hotels, represent them, stand up against the brands." I think that should be the future. Thanks, Priya. This uh, talking about uh, if I was to walk into an owned hotel as a guest, and or a managed hotel. what do you think i will see as prime differences in terms of quality standards of the hotel and particularly the guest experience will there be any difference between an owned hotel and a managed hotel from a guest experience point of view from a quality experience point of view well if you're doing it right absolutely none because uh, the sop should be in place the management audits the integrity audits and i think for for us whether it's an owned property or managed property it's run the same way the general manager is accountable they're accountable to the uh head of those divisions and um i mean the main thing is actually making sure that your owner is aligned with what your brand standards are and brand values because it's it's all as i said great when the first time it's opened and everything is shiny and new uh you know the the telling difference happens i think in year 4 and 5 and 6 as you go forward and you have to then obviously your due diligence on your owners has to be uh good you have to have partners that understand the business or understand what the dynamics of and the ecosystem of the hospitality industry is so i think you you have to have um alignment with the owner and understanding of the business and you know we've got great owners who want um to do uh, good things but they, it's a it's a business that you have to be constantly not just innovating but constantly doing it right right but so that takes not just uh tech investment people um training of course but have you faced any challenges with any of your owners where they have sort of not agreed with your changes to the hotel or any capex yeah, requirements yeah i think everybody has those uh, pain points and then you have to um kind of leverage your relationship or uh, sometimes even exit uh, if brand standards and um people are not willing to do that and that's a painful decision of course uh, but on the other hand you have owners who uh want us to come in and transform the hotel and we've had you know great success stories in uh even reflagging and rebranding uh from other chains right. dilip uh, there's a question for you about you just mentioned uh, in the passing about third party management companies uh what do you think are the what 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 impact do they have on the profitability and the performance of a hotel uh, is it a good idea to look at third party management companies yeah i think <coughs> it depends on where you are uh like say for example if you look at the us today you know they have this asset management company whether you look at interstate and some of the bigger players they act as a management company which is a white label and they manage all the different brands and for us i think as a as a third party management company like you know when we when we started uh the the focus was you know we we had we had no Uh, at that time no interest in terms of going into hotels we were forced to go into hotels because we were predominantly uh, a food company uh, and then from that we sort of moved into hotels because the cash you generate on food sort of started fueling some of our hotel investments and then we gave our hotels to third party because at that time we didn't have the distribution so if you don't have the brand uh, and if you don't have the distribution and if you don't have the people and now it's becoming in the loyalty program you know and it depends which loyalty program you want to choose and i can talk about loyalty programs and compare loyalty programs between some of the other brands where some of the loyalty programs today are not owner friendly at all uh we have this issue with some of the larger brands which uh, we are uh, uh which we are an owner and we say to the the management company look you know for you yes you're discounting and giving all these benefits for your loyalty members but me as an owner 
I'm not getting the return what I should be getting for that room type. So, you know, as an owner, I'm spending four, five hundred thousand dollars per key. And if I'm not getting a 12, 10, 12% return, I'm really not hitting the criteria. And then after four, after five or six years, they come to you and say, oh, we need to renovate the hotel or we need to renovate the rooms. I say, like, I haven't even made the return yet. You know, my payback is 10, 12 years. And, you know, you can't do it. So it doesn't work. So there's a, there's a, there's a big misalignment between some of the third-party management companies and the owners. And I, I do feel the pain because I'm taking the pain, you know, as an owner. And I think uh, most of us here, we, 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 we understand. So if you don't have that owner mindset and, and if your focus is just looking at fees and how much money you're getting and how much you're driving on lo loyalty and how much loyalty members you're driving because you're giving a 30, 40% discount on the, on the rate, you know, it doesn't make sense. From day one, you know, you're at two of the, uh, the extremes. You know, the owner is here, the management company is here. And of course, the management company comes and says, well, you sign as a management company, you have to, you have to adhere to all the benefits we give. And I said, like, okay, what, what's the owner going to get? So, uh, so, they, so I think, so based on that, you know, the good thing which has come out is that, you know, we've learned from the mistakes of the big hotel management companies, and we make sure we don't make the same mistakes. Uh, so when we launched our own loyalty program, it's been... It's a very fair loyalty program because we have 40 different owners, actually. So it's very difficult, you know. Uh, normally, most of the big companies, you know, their, their loyalty program is just for their brand. But for us, our loyalty program is across, across 40 different owning brands. And you, it's, it's, you have to get alignment from 40 different owners as well because everyone's talking like an owner. So, so we made sure that, you know, we don't flow the same mistakes into, into some of the, whether it's distribution, whether it's recharges. Uh, I know one management company, you know, every time someone forgets their email address, just to reset the email address, they charge you $20, yeah. right? And this is the $20 coming from the US as a charge, and it's in dollars. And maybe in a country like India, you operate in rupees. So when you convert dollars into rupees, you get, as an owner, you get really whacked on the stomach. So I think, you know, we just have to be really careful and mindful, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a management company, that we have to make sure that we think like an owner and act or execute as a management company. So we understand the pains of the owner. So we can, you know, some of our owners today, for example, like, you know, uh, sometimes they come to us and they say, you, you have two hotels already in that region. And how do I know that you're going to manage my hotel, you own these two hotels, how do I know I'm going to get the fair, the fair share? And I always say, you know, it's totally different market segments and we're not competing with each other. Guess what, after three, four years, their return is much higher than mine. I'm happy, the owner is happy, you know, it's happy days. So, and that's what we want, and we want one owner to, to, to develop a relationship so that he gives us one, two, three, four, five, six hotels, rather than having 100 donors I have to deal with who, have, who are in, in different places and who are sometimes not really savvy about hotels because people sometimes think you build a hotel and from day one it's going to make a profit. Sometimes it's not. You know, you need to go through that grow, growing pain in terms of the ramp up and then stabilization to make sure that you do make money. But as long as you know, you, you have the owner mindset and, and you're supporting the owner, I think it's a win-win. It's I think all what we want is a win-win solution. And we always say, you know, we don't want to be the largest hotel company in the world. We want to be the best hotel company in the world. Well said, well and said. And that's it. Yes. Well said. Be it managed hotels or be it own hotels, all of them need talent. And that is uh, where we are facing a huge crunch, as you know, that there is a talent, there's been loss of talent, people are moving to other sectors, people are not wanting to come back to the hospitality sector for various reasons. It could be work-life balance for the young generation, it could be uh, long hours, it could be low salary. There's so many reasons. In fact, it's so disturbing to even know that some of our hotel management schools are not getting enough admissions. 
And, uh, and in some cases, even the graduates who are passing out of the hotel schools are going to different sectors. For example, the facility management companies are grabbing them. So what do you think, and this is an answer, question for all three of you, uh, what are your thoughts on this? How do we overcome this challenge in the short term and in the long term in India, particularly? Okay. Maybe start with Patu. See, I think, so let's look at the current talent issue. 80% of the jobs in, in a hotel are low engagement, very transactional, low in salary, low in skill, and highly tiring. Because you stand on your feet for nine hours, you're, you know, it's exhausting. And what is the career pathing they see is more of the same. So now let's come to, say, my example. When I look at it, I'm charging 6,000, say. There's a hotel next to me charging 10,000, five star. Obviously, they can pay a higher salary to a front office associate than I can, even if my staff to room ratio is less. I think after COVID, everybody has come down. And it is very difficult for me when I look at my payroll as a percentage of my rev par, or my payroll as a part of rev par. It has to be the same as that guy's, but the guy who's coming is getting a higher salary there. So for me, it was very simple. It is I will not go after the talent pool of luxury hotels. So our luxury hotels, we have three. The talent pool is, is fungible between Taj, Oberoi, us, and the international brands. At the lemon tree level, the talent pool is fundamentally different. I don't want somebody who's very smart. Who, you see, you end up paying for personality. I don't pay for personality because most of my guests get intimidated with a guy who's very smart and sharp. So basically, I look for attitude and I look for lower educational qualification. Oh. So I hire many people who are not even 10th standard and about 1,000 people are not even 4th standard pass. Young Guta chaps. The whole view was, let's make them functionally literate. And let me tell you, the attrition rate is also less. The funny thing is, he's not here. I was telling Vikram Obroy once when I was staying in his hotel. Every time I went there many years ago in Bombay, some guy would come and serve me and say, you don't recognize me. I said, who are you? He said, I'm from Lemon Tree, Aurangabad, Lemon Tree, Pune, Lemon Tree, here, there. So I called him. I said, how many butlers do you have who are employees of mine? <laughs> and he said, it's impossible. Then he called me and said, there were 17. But they would have never taken them directly. So we are a way station. You know, we train guys, they go on. It's cool. I think our future lies in going after people who wouldn't get a job in a luxury hotel. And we should be happy if they stay with us for two, three years. Thank you. Can I add to that? Sure, Priya. So I think the big challenge for India is really um, tourism. And we've talked about demand uh, being very high and lots of hotel rooms being open. And I'm sure that's going to be talked about the next two days. But actually, the potential is 25 million jobs in five years. Oh, yes. So agree. how is that going to happen? And that's something that all of us as heads of company, as uh, divisions, how is that going to happen, particularly this new generation doesn't really want to work in, um, they don't really want to work from our, you know, our surveys uh, show that it's, you know, they want to work for six hours, they want more time off, they want weekends off. And that's really in play in this young generation. So whether they are coming from tier two towns or to, or tier one, they have that expectation of their lifestyle. And, you yeah. know, it comes from internet, movies, this, that, I don't know uh, what it is, but I think the, the industry requires the ability to work hard and it also work long hours. It is a 24-7 business if you're in a uh, hospitality yes, business. Yes. So how does that play out maybe in a tier two and tier three towns? If there are less people, you shut the reception down or shut the services down and have just, you know, many hotels have just two people on duty or you don't run three shifts. So those are the ways that we will have to actually maybe look at how we manage hotels going forward to uh, to help us structure the, the workforce and, you know, and, and, the, and the people. But the challenge is going to do these 25 million people because all of us might build hundreds of hotels. How is that going to be um, managed? Actually, I'd yeah, like to add that. Yeah, food for thought. Dig you know, digitalization of basic work processes can massively in increase productivity Absolutely. and therefore reduce staff burden. That's but, one. But you still need staff. Yeah, but what I'm I mean, saying less. is that if you have half the staff now, yeah. Uh, that you had earlier, you can pay them more and be a little more careful on the, the hours and so on. 
You may go into an early rate like yeah. anywhere else. So, Dilip, we, uh, we are running short of time. So, 30 seconds for you for this answer. Then I have one final question for all of you. I think uh, just a quick one. <coughs> it's on talent. Of course, everyone's facing the same issue. But it's about understanding the root cause. The root cause is that we're not really developing enough talent. And we're not really fulfilling that pipeline. So, I think one of the things we did was we set up a hotel school in Thailand with, uh, in, in collaboration with La Roche. So in order to, to, to fight this talent. And also, from a talent perspective, as long as you, know, you map out a career path for your, your people, they will stay with you and they will grow with you. <coughs> uh, and I think that's important. Especially when you have owned hotels, it's easier because you can keep moving them around within your 500 and like plus hotels. And, uh, and you can, as, uh, you know, we have a lot of GMs who, who leave us and go. Uh, sometimes they think the grass on the other side is green, and then after nine months, they want to come back. And there is a reason for that, because the company mindset is very entrepreneurial. And we don't put people in a box and ask them to think outside the box. So I think that's important. Thank you, Dilip. So I have one final uh, out-of-syllabus question for all three of you. And this is a hypothetical situation. Suppose you have been evaluating a property to own as a hotel. You find out it's not feasible. Within some time, somebody else buys that property and offers it to you for management contract. Will you take it? 100%. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Despite this not, not being feasible, no, it's not you. See, there are two things, management contracts, one is to manage the asset. Okay, I'll take my fees for it. I will probably not make what I want in the incentive fees because I will not be able to uh, get to the levels I would in that uh, location. So I'm quite ready. Okay, to what about you, Dilip? I won't take it. Uh, because, you know, you, you have a mis misalignment from day one because the owner wants this as a return. No, no, Dilip, obviously you have to explain to the owner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That this is how you're going to do. Yeah. So as long as you explain to the owner and say, your return is going to be halved, and uh, our management fees is this, <laughs> then if, if he agrees, and if he agrees with the brand, maybe. But otherwise, it's not worth the hassle. You know, there's an, always another bus coming. <laughs> Thank you. Priya, what about you? I, I would go for it at this stage. But it depends. There has to be alignment on, an, on all the things. Knowing fully well that is not feasible as a project. No, what do you mean so by not feasible? Financially not vi viable. But I'm getting my fee. Maybe the land cost is too high. It's not no, going no, to be. No, no, I'm not. I'm getting my fee, so. That oh, doesn't are you matter. then in that case Actually. we are also pious? That guy <laughs> yeah. will, will be a standalone hotel. So let's let's face <laughs> yeah, facts here. Yeah. Everybody will take it, even the lip. But we will all tell the owner that this is what we'll take. Yeah, the realistic yeah. Uh, picture. Thank yeah. you, thank you very much. And uh, I think maybe just one or two questions, if anybody on the floor wants to ask any question to any of the three panelists. Anyone? Otherwise, I think we'll conclude. I don't see any hands. So thank you very much, uh, Patu, sure, Dilip, thank you. Priya. It's been great thank having you. you on the stage. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Patu. Oh. Oh. Hmm. This is for records. <laughs> that we were here. Come. I think Priya should be between Come us. Come in the same. <laughs> Some beauty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not my okay. only function, but it's okay. For this photograph, yes. <laughs>